Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. (laughs) Hello, David, and welcome to our podcast listeners throughout the universe. Um, This is the Feeling Good Podcast, episode 335. Today, our topic is self-defeating beliefs, which David has talked about before, but we're going to bring it to life today by doing some personal work with a magnificently lovely team therapist, Mariusz Worga. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, hello, everyone across the country and around the world. <laughs> Welcome, Mariusz. Did, did, did you know you, that you were uh, magnificently, what was it? <laughs> A magn- I can't remember. A magnificently lovely. Oh, yes. Magnificently <laughs> lovely today. <laughs> I know. that's. How, I'm setting the expectations high. Um, let me introduce you, Mariusz. Mariusz is a psychiatrist in Southern California, and he works primarily with patients who have cancer. And Mariusz got to the path of psychiatry in a very interesting way. His, and he started his journey after medical school as a pathologist, working as a pathology radiation, res, I'm sorry, as a residency in pathology. And within that, he, be, he began running groups for cancer patients and then got really interested in becoming a radiation oncologist. And then after speaking to one of his mentors, Carl Symington, who was a radiation oncologist who ultimately became a CBT therapist, Marius switched his residency and became a psychiatrist, which I'm so happy about. And Marius has studied a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy before studying team CBT. He did part of his residency at Howard University, working with Maxie Malsby, in addition to studying with Carl Symington. And I think you've studied with other brilliant CBT therapists around the CBT theoretical universe until you happened upon team CBT. And now Mariusz is, you know, applying CBT, team CBT to his work at, with the patients he's working with who are suffering and coping with cancer. And he is also an incredible team leader and trainer. He's currently running with another great team therapist, a newbie group for beginners, newer people coming into the team CBT world for, on Wednesdays, but it's an international group. And he put on an incredible conference last year in Warsaw, Poland with an incredible, with a, a faculty and he trained, he was a catalyst for training. What is it like a hundred Polish and Ukrainian therapists who have continued many of them who have continued studying team CBT. And, and Mariusz is also the catalyst for another team CBT intensive that's going to happen in Warsaw, March 30th to April 2nd. And for the first time ever, this training is going to have a track for therapists, and it's also going to have a training track for how people who are in business could apply the techniques of team CBT. So that's a pretty exciting component of this conference. David, our beloved David Burns, is going to be a keynote speaker and have a question and answer period and welcome all the members and the attendees. So that will be an exciting addition to this conference. And (laughs) thank you very much. I can only under deliver now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You've accomplished so much, Mariusz. I wonder if that's part of what we're going to be working on today. Exactly. That is going to be part of it. But I wanted to add that uh, David is going to also uh, do a live demonstration with Uh, Jill Levitt. So yes. Uh, so that is going to be an exciting part. So thank you very much, David, for accepting. Well, thanks our- for uh, all you're you're doing, and I'm excited to to meet you face to face here for the first time today. And thank and really appreciate your uh, uh, working with us in this particular way. I might say that we're going to do live work with Mariusz, and 
if it's good, we'll uh, ho hopefully present it as uh, two consecutive podcasts, part one and, and part two. And theoretically, the topic is is perfectionism, but uh, we always go where the energy leads us. So you, you never know where you're going to start out and where you're going to end up. But the the whole idea here is that we we feel strongly believe in the biblical idea of physician heal thyself and think that uh, ideally all therapists will do personal work as a part of your training uh, not only because when you're in the patient role it gives you a much deeper understanding of how the therapy works and the importance of the different pieces the testing the measurement the empathy the resistance part the and 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 the various methods and um and once you've kind of worked with your own internal demons uh, to to a certain extent then when you meet with your patients you you can say you know i i i've been there myself i understand what you're saying and and i know how awful that type of suffering can, can be feeling that you're not good enough or, or whatever the case may be. And uh, I, I can also show you the way out, out of the woods so to, to get out of this uh, despair or intense anxiety or whatever and back to a feeling of uh, joy or enlightenment if you want to look at it from a philosophical perspective. But uh, so thank you so much because our best teaching comes from doing real work with, with 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 real people you can say whatever you want in a book or claim what happens behind closed doors but when you let people in to to observe the process it's it's radically radically different so let's start out uh, and take a look uh, let's do a little of the tea of team therapy and see how you're feeling right now before our session has started or you know at the beginning of our session and then we'll take another look at the end of the session to see if there have been some some changes and maybe Rhonda you could uh, share your screen again uh, no I, I think I have it here actually I've got your brief mood survey right here and I'll just briefly go through the scores and then we can uh, do, do a little bit of talking and get the show on the road um, you filled out the brief mood survey based on how are you feeling right at this moment uh, about, uh, you know, five five or ten minutes ago. Um, and at that moment, your score on the depression scale, which goes from zero to 20, was six. So there's just a little minimal mood elevation. I Maybe you could call it mild de depression. But one of the ratings was quite elevated you know each symptom goes from zero not at all to four extremely and three is a lot and you 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 mark down a lot of loss of self-esteem inferiority or, and worthlessness so we can see right off the bat that like perhaps so many people uh, you Marius have accomplished a tremendous amount in your life and yet you're you're feeling like like so many of us do like you're not good enough or or inferior or whatever and we'll find out about that in just just a, a moment um the suicide items are three screening items that are all zero uh the anxiety is uh, considerably higher than the depression it's 13 out of out of 20 the more than twice the depression which was only 6 out of 20 and four of the five symptoms were in the a lot range which would be the severe range the, the anxiety was a, a lot the uh, worrying is a lot the uh, tense or on edge you're feeling it a lot uh, ner nervousness you're feeling a lot and the only one that's uh, just uh, you know, slightly is uh, frightened. The angers are all zeros except for the first one, which is uh, feelings of frustration, which is uh, moderate. So that's two out of 20. 
And then on the uh, the happiness scale, this is a five item happiness scale, which can go from zero to twenty. Uh, that there there's a lot of happiness uh, in in spite of the elevated depression and anxiety scores. Uh, but nothing is at the highest level. It's it's thirteen out of twenty. So that that would be you know moderately moderately happy. But the one that's low is the same as the one on the depression, the, the, the feeling worthwhile with high self-esteem. That's only somewhat. But all the others are a lot of, uh, you know, feeling happy or joyful is a lot or hopeful or optimistic is a lot and motivated is a lot and pleasure and satisfaction in life is a lot. Nothing in extremely. So there's plenty of room to 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 go up from there, which we certainly hope will happen. And then finally, the relationship satisfaction uh, with uh, uh, Ale Alessandra. Uh, Alexandra. How, how do you pronounce it? Alexandra. Oh, Alexandra. There's an mm -hmm. X in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. A K in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. Is uh, 29 out of 30. 30 is a perfect relationship satisfaction score. And this this one is is tremendously high, indicating the, a, a wonderful rel relationship with her. And and then finally, how much homework did you do uh, since the last session? This is set up for <clears throat> therapists who are seeing people on a weekly basis. It, it is a little bit of homework. And so with that, let's let let's uh, dive in and. And, and and tell us what's been going on. We also have this excellent daily mood log that you that you sent, uh, which I'll just give a ten second summary of, and we'll go into it in detail. But the upsetting event was waking up in the middle of the night and uh, realizing that you didn't send some promised homework to a patient uh, you had seen one or two days earlier, and then you had a lot of very intense emotions, much more than you had at the start of the session today the you know the you were sad and you know down 80 out of 100 and anxious 100 out of 100 and guilty and ashamed 100 out of 100 and, and inferior inadequate 90 lonely uh, 60 embarrassed 70 hopeless uh, and pessimistic and despairing 60 frustrated 85 and angry and irritated and upset 85 and when we met you at the start of the session you were just pleasant and fun to be around and and you wouldn't guess uh, you were having such intense negative uh, feelings as as this and that's one of the reasons we like to test is because your perceptions of your patients and loved ones and colleagues will occasionally be accurate but will frequently be be way off based, and th this can show you exactly where where someone is at with with a particular kind of problem. And then a lot of negative thoughts. I should have sent the homework. I should always be on top of my game. Uh, you know, a patient was in a crisis, and they'll get worse without the homework. And 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 a lot of self critical thoughts that will, as I say, look at in in detail. And, and and just just a little bit. So thank you uh, so much for joining us and opening up with your heart and your mind. And and we'll see see if we can uh, maybe work a little bit of magic here today. Thank you very much for allowing me to be part of it. <laughs> I am quite <laughs> anxious right now, primarily because of the the performance. <laughs> And being on the podcast for the first time with you, and also shame, you know, as a therapist, uh, revealing your own weaknesses is is, um, uh, is pretty, you know. And then the bushfire is going to catch on fire, right? <laughs> so. Sure. Now, just uh, let me ask you a question because everything a patient says uh, can be important, in, including how they're feeling when when they're with you, with with us. And you said that you're anxious about your performance. Maybe you have a, a thought or two that's associated with that anxiety about the performance being here on the podcast. Uh, it, is, um, it is more about, you know, that is going to go public and people are going to hear 
because I shared really private thoughts uh, that I don't share uh, usually publicly. Um, and actually with the one that we just when we are coming on air, we were talking about how much easier it is to be a therapist. Uh, However, I had I had been in the role of a patient several times before uh, for training purposes, but also um, for my own work. And I know that there is there are times that that what may be obvious to observer being in the hot seat may not be obvious to you. And I've been in that place, and uh, it looks like oh the resistance, but the person who is resisting is not aware of it. So. So, so, what, so what's the thought that the, about being in public and revealing private stuff? What's the <clears> thought that makes you anxious? What are you telling yourself? Oh, so uh, that people are going to be thinking less of me, and people are going to be what? People are going to people will think less of me. Oh yeah, uh huh. So uh, I'm going to write that down, and you might want to also. Uh, mm -hmm. People will 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 think less less of me. Could I could I just pursue that with you for? Mm -hmm for for a moment because I, I i'll bet you mariush that 30 percent between 30 and 90 percent of our listeners have that thought often and uh, uh and it can really grip your your heart and uh, it'd be pretty pretty devastating pretty terrifying now let, let's let's assume i want to do something called the downward arrow technique which you can do at the empathy phase to gain information, or you can do at the methods phase, but it's an uncovering technique. Let, let's say that um, people uh, listening to this podcast uh, see that, that you're flawed and whatever and think less of, of you. What, what would that mean to you? Why would that be upsetting to you? Oh, so... Um... They are. so one of the reasons is if they think less of me, they're less likely to come for therapy with me. Okay. Uh, or those uh, who are in therapy with me are going to be disappointed. Okay, let me write these down. They'll they'll, they'll be less likely to to want to come to me for therapy. Um and 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 then uh uh, uh my 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 patients uh my, might be might be disappointed in, in me, mm -hmm. and I'm writing that down. Mm -hmm. uh, and and let me ask you uh, how believable th these are. The the uh, how how much do you believe the thought the first thought, which is pe people will will think less of me, revealing my personal. Uh, Maybe like seventy percent. Seventy percent. So I'll put a seventy there. And then, the, 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 then they'll be less likely uh, to to want uh, to come to me for for therapy. How 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 much do you believe that? So, um, I mean, the world does not revolve around me. So maybe fifty percent. How much? Fifty. Fifty percent. Okay, great. And then, um, and if my patients hear the podcast, uh, they'll be disappointed in me. How how much do you believe okay. that? I don't think many of my patients listen to all the podcasts. Maybe only those that I assign them. <laughs> sure, but but if some of them do, how how believe how much do you believe? Yeah, I think fifty percent. Fifty percent. So these these are not you know intensely burning thoughts, but they're they're there. And then one last question: let let's assume that uh, there are people who who think less of me and. Uh, uh, decide they don't want to send me any patients uh, because they've seen this human side of myself, this flawed side, and then uh, and then they're they're disappointed in me. Then would that be upsetting to you? What what would that mean to you? Oh yeah, so uh, there is not just with patients, but also with the trainings that we are offering and other things that is going to affect me financially, you know, significantly that um, I won't be able to meet the end, meet the, <laughs> get the ends meet, you know, so. Oh, okay. Uh, that I won't be able to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. This will affect me financially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personally. 
and then uh, of course nobody uh, no, nobody would wants to be short on money and and be affected fi financially. Uh, that's that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But why why would it be upsetting to to you? You know what what are you the most afraid of? Would you be living in a homeless colony somewhere or? Maybe not right away. Uh, um, I think that one of the uh, things would be, it would be quite shameful. You have our daughter's wedding coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite expensive. So um, I don't want to go in debt to, to pay for it. Right? And, oh, I say, yeah. And my oh. other daughter is graduating uh, finally. So that's going to be. So the end of the year looks better than the beginning. <laughs> so. Sure. But if you're, if this podcast and the vulnerability that you show adversely affected you financially, would how do you, are you worried that that could affect your relationship? Like, would you have a great relationship with Alexander now? Would she re be resentful? Would she be upset? Oh yeah, I think the finances is, uh, is one of the issues that um, because she also went, we had really. Re decreased incomes last year and and so so we are uh for, for many different reasons so we are uh so we are really looking at different so we have both made decisions that decreased our incomes uh inadvertently right and um new career paths or whatever and so yeah that would definitely affect our our relationship uh, and you know, in my age, I don't have that much perspective to <laughs> improve my income. Uh, so, yeah, so yeah, so that is so affecting yeah, not only my relationship with Alexander, but with my kids too, you know, not being able to afford. They're all adults, so it's not like, you know, but. Could you put that, this theme into a statement, to a thought that you're yeah, having? So, so um <laughs> my wife and my kids are going to turn against me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't believe it entirely, but that is like, you know, but there's a shame. Uh, sh practically, there's the feeling of shame here uh, that that I should have known better. And that is, uh, um, I should. Sure. Mm -hmm. You feel like you've. You've let them down, and I let them down. Yeah, I let them. They're going to lose respect for you, and maybe love you less. And... Yes, exactly. I let down my family, uh, uh, yeah. wife, kids. I won't be able to afford <laughs> to pay up for that wedding. Sure, and and that is going to be shameful. I'm sure that's very painful. Well, tell us a little bit of, now, on a more general level, about the. Uh, the perfectionism that you that you've uh, kind of been struggling with, and I presume it's probably been there your whole life. And and like most what we call, as you know, self defeating beliefs, they're two edged swords. They can bring a lot of benefits in terms of working extraordinarily hard and accomplishing more, but they can also put us under a lot of uh, pressure and. And, and 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 distress. Uh, to tell us, uh, tell us your story. So, um, so with this particular event that I put on Daily Mood Log, or or would you like me to say something else? I didn't qu quite get that. Being kind Do you of want him to talk about just the day, the thought, the event that occurred on the Daily Mood Log that he wrote on the Daily Mood Log? Well, in general. It, it, um, it's all good. It's all good, actually. Just uh, follow follow your heart. I, I think what I what I think Aunt, uh, Rhonda and I would like to do is just hear you talk and talk about your feelings and what it is you want help with and what it's been like for you to see if we can form a, a little bit of a warm and understanding co connection with you, and then we can use that as a springboard to to move forward and see what we want to do. So, so the. What happens is that I have uh, many irons in fire, right? So I'm trying to, I'm in, in, involved in multiple different projects, including research, um, a, including, a, including of course, seeing patients, clinical responsibilities in the hospital, 
um, consultations and, and private practice and excuse me. Um, uh, and and then training and you know travel to train and so on and 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 so I because of those many projects I'm I'm thinly spread and very often in a hurry and then I make mistakes and and for example this time it was not it was uh, it sometimes interferes with my sleep and that was a particular example of it when. I woke up, uh, realized that I didn't send that, that that homework, and you know I was quite happy with how the session went because we did really agenda setting, and there was a pivotal moment in there that the patient really wanted to go after that, and so I needed to. We did uh, we did some positive reframe, and I wanted her to call continue on that, and she she really caught on on it. And and I was and I promised, hey, I'm going to send you the the, the, the part that we did at home, and and you'll finish the the table of the uh, positive reframe before our next session. And and then and then and then I that day I was in a hurry to wrap it up because you know we covered more than I expected, and and then and then I had my group uh, that I have with patients and. And so I, I couldn't fit, since simply do it right after session as I usually do. And then after the session, I had my hospital, <laughs> after the group, it was evening, and I had to finish my hospital notes and simply forgot about it. And then, and then woke up two days later in the middle of the night that, wow, I realized that I didn't do that. And so, and it was so intrusive that I couldn't fall back asleep. I couldn't ignore it. So I got up and one of the things that I didn't, because I was in a hurry, I couldn't find the table right handy, which I usually am. And of course, at night, when I got to thinking, I find the table right away, you know, without a problem. I was not fumbling like I was in the session because of a hurry. And and then, of course, I send it. Uh, and then I I... So yeah, and, and then I realized that I had some emails that I didn't answer, and this, so I started, and then felt guilty for being behind of so many other things, and and so so that was um, uh, that was the the storm. And I, you know, I of course felt guilty that I put myself into it. Uh, that was a shame that that I should have known better. Come on, uh, uh, and so yeah, that was. That was um, quite uh, uh, so. Yeah, of course, there was no way of going back to sleep at that time. And then, of course, the next day I'm tired, and I'm not on the top of my game. And and I'm sure. uh, and so that is like a, yeah. And then I know that when I'm tired, everything goes slower. So if I'm, in a, I need to address many things, and I don't think as quick. And so, uh, so that's. That compounds really a problem. So. Well, I can really identify with what you're saying that uh, that you're hardworking and ambitious, and you have many irons in the fire. And uh, and 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 by the same token, it's real easy to overlook little details here and there. And in the middle of the night, you can wake up and have trouble getting back to sleep. And start thinking about remembering all the things you forgot to do, and 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 I think too at at night th those things can become very magnified in your mind, and so the anxiety and the guilt uh, it, it begins to, to to build up quite a bit, and um, uh, and and I don't know uh, if you've ever had this this experience, but. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit like like you in in the sense that I'm doing a zillion things, and then uh, a lot of times in the middle of the night, I'll wake up. Well, it can be a good thing because if I've been thinking about a problem, often I'll wake up and the solution will come to me. If it's some statistics thing I'm working on that was confusing to me, but sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll I'll wake up. And start to think of all the problems, uh, you know, in 
in the various things that I'm trying to do, and I'll I'll get a little bit panicky and paranoid, and and start to think, you know, about all the how awful uh, everything is, and uh, and then the next morning when I wake up, I I try to remember what all those horrible things were. And I can't remember what they were. <laughs> and it's kind of a relief. But in the middle of the night, it, it just mm -hmm. seems so real that these uh, are, are somewhat insoluble problems and that things re are, are really bad. And, and so the, the, the terror, as you've pointed out here in your daily mood log, can, can, be, can be intense. Would it be okay, uh, would this be a good timing, Ron, if I read these negative thoughts? out loud for our well, listeners. Well, Mayush, do you, can we ask you a question first? Yes. You know, do you feel like David is understanding where you're coming from? Oh, yeah, that is very much the same thing. However, I, sometimes I don't have that when relieve in the morning that will look so bad at night. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's too bad. Like, That's like, awful. They, they look often uh, maybe a little less bad. So. Yeah. So, yeah, and but I also can relate to the fact that sometimes in the middle of the night you can you find solutions, and then you cannot sleep because you're excited because of the solution. Yeah. yeah. Well, would it be okay with you, David, if I gave Marius a little empathy before you listed? Yes, this? please do. Then we can. <laughs> I feel an urge to dive we're... into. Sure. I mean, sure. Marius, you described a million. I mean, I'm saying a million, but you. It feels like that when you talk about your life. You have. You're doing research. You have rounds at the hospital. You have a private practice. Um, you're running a group, you're also doing training, not just want training in the United States, you're doing trainings in Poland, you know, you're, I'm sure you, you, you know, you're doing a lot of writing. And I know from our talking how, how dedicated you are to your patients, both in the hospital, in your private practice. And, and even when you're doing research, you're doing that because you're dedicated to serving the world and providing a great service to others. And so you described yourself as thinly, thinly spread because you're dedicated in all of these various arenas in your life. Am I so far? Am I getting that right? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. And actually you saved me to be even th thinner spread. <laughs> yeah. After doing this daily mood log, I still didn't learn much. Uh, and I overcommitted myself to another thing, but ah. thank you thank you to Rhonda. I'm okay. So out of it. And so here you are, you're in a, you're in a therapy session with the patient and she has one of these pivotal moments like I like to think of them as a magical moment where she has this moment of understanding. And that's when you're doing the positive reframing, when you're looking with her, at what the the feelings that she was having on her daily mood log say about her, that's awesome, or or speak to her core values or give her some kind of a benefit. And you, it's, am I getting this right? You started that with her and then you wanted her to finish it as homework. So you started it on a, a form or a sheet, of pay, a sheet and you wanted her to have that sheet and finish it as homework so that she could continue with her enthusiastic positive reframing and you offered to send it to her and then got then after that session you had you know you run a really incredible group for your patients in the hospital so you did that group and then you had hospital rounds and then two days and then you forgot to send it to her like ee, yeah like our eyes are why like you forgot to send it to you. you went home you had dinner you saw your wife you relaxed you know you took care of yourself as little as i imagine you probably do and then two days later woke up and said oh my gosh this really important thing that i promised my patient and i know how dedicated you are so here you promised your patient and i'm wondering how concerned you are that you let her down and you felt frustrated and upset not just guilty or shame but you know like disappointing her must have felt so like a stab in your own heart that you were not providing a hundred percent of what you wanted to provide for your patient. Yeah, that was quite, you got it quite right. That is, uh, yeah. So that was also angry at myself and, and, uh, you know, for many reasons, come on, I'm, I know better. You know? <laughs> so, so I, I should not overcommit myself. And so, so, and of course I should not use the word should, you know, so, <laughs> so, yeah. so, 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 you know, why doing this, this daily mood log, it was clear to me that, yeah, these are distorted thoughts, you know, uh, but uh, at the same time, 
Uh, when I'm comfortable, they don't bother me. But but in those <laughs> times of stress, they they yeah they add and and I I start believing in them. You know. Yeah, and the stress waking you up is so strong. It's waking you up at night, and you fumbling around. You finally find the form to send it to her, and then you realize there's more work that you haven't done by you haven't responded to emails, and you must get a gazillion emails a day, and um, so you can't go back to sleep because now you have all this. <laughs> all this other distractions sending that to her all the emails that you haven't finished so then that that day you're not doing as competently as you would like to do because you're suffering from sleep depression so that frustration must have continued on for the following day yeah so yeah so and and i know that i function much better if i get good night's sleep you know, so. yeah so, so yeah well i yeah. feel uh close to you because of uh, what what you're sharing here and really really appreciate it feel sad that you're struggling and giving 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 all the time and perhaps not always appreciating the the, the fabulous things you're doing and focus on the what falls between the cracks and have a tendency to to beat up on yourself pretty pretty hard and um, uh, you know, for for our listeners, uh, you know, you, you may not be a psychiatrist or CEO of a corporation, but uh, I, I think that all of us uh, are prone to to do this kind of thing, to be taking on too too much. Uh, you know, even if you're a mother and and you you have your kids trying to keep up with them and to keep up with your family. And then if you have a career trying to, trying to keep up with, with that. And, uh, uh, you, you know, so, sometimes uh, life seems kind of like a, a, a treadmill that we're slipping, slipping back on and trying to keep up with. And, and where, where, where's the joy uh, for, for all this hard, hard, hard work that we're doing. Uh, but uh, one of the things I value about our career as uh, therapists or psychiatrists, you know, I think of myself more as a therapist than a psychiatrist. Uh, but uh, it it just it it's it just such a privilege to to me to to get to know people at that open, deep level because it it affirms my own humanity and 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 flawed flawed nature and and so i always feel so grateful to to see people as as they really are and uh i don't know if you you ever have thought that too when you're when when you're doing therapy but it it's really a a gift that we have as a therapist and and you're sharing that gift with with Rhonda and David right now and i for one you know deeply admire and appreciate appreciate you i don't too often appreciate people for their accomplishments uh, you know I, I i can admire them like you know my my roommate phil allen from college who i talked to on the phone just recently and or, I, or we've been exchanging emails he's the nicest guy in the world and he's this amazing quantum physicist and he's accomplished so much but he's all, all always been so humble and self-effacing and uh so kindly and uh it just makes him uh so so human and so so likable and and uh i i really appreciate really appreciate you marius and i don't i'm i'm so imperfect i'm not even exactly sure how to pronounce your name but marius <laughs> Thank you very much. Actually, you're pronouncing it perfectly well. Uh, yeah. No, it's surprisingly well. I noticed that earlier. <laughs> so, thank you very much for your kind words, and definitely, uh, a yeah, it is easier when you have a patient who has these same thoughts, and you think, oh well, you can help them. But when you, it affects you, it is like you have your own blind spot. You know, you don't see it. Yeah. Um. So are you sh um, what grade would you give us for empathy right now? Oh, A plus. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? What? How, what are we doing to get an A plus? 
So uh, first round, was she really related very much to uh, my feelings? So uh, so acknowledged and 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 related to my feelings, both um, feeling empathy and thought empathy, and uh, and there was a lot of stroking with both of you. You and you, David, you really was able to connect with the commonality of our human condition and make it so relevant and universal. Uh, so it doesn't feel as shameful as as uh, as initially it felt. So, so yeah, I'll appreciate that. So and yeah, you struck me <laughs> very, yeah. from the very beginning. So thank you. Well, thank you for that. Let me just kind of uh, review these thoughts so our listeners will get the full scoop, and then we can kind of see what what it is you'd like to um, accomplish here uh, this afternoon. Um, the first negative thought you had in the middle of the night, and you can tell me how much you believe each one, and I'll write it down. Uh, uh, when when you had this thought, how much did you believe it? I, I, I should have sent the homework. I, I shouldn't have made such a basic uh, therapy error. I must never fail or make mistakes. So at that, time, at that time, I believe it's like 90%. 90%, okay. And then the second thought, I, I should always be on top of my game, Superman. Uh, then without sleep, I'm making more mistakes and can't be on top of my game. So how much did you believe that I should always be on top of my game? That is like 100%. 100, sure. And then I, I, I shouldn't have spent so much time on paperwork finishing notes from the hospital, sending prescriptions, filling out disability paperwork, and so forth. Uh, I should know better, and uh, not, not, and I, I shouldn't should all, all over myself. So how much did you believe that one? So the, the first one I believed, uh, oh, I was 100%. I was really angry with the, the demands of paperwork. Yeah. So. And then the patient was in crisis, and they will get worse without the homework. I undermined her efforts, and I shouldn't do harm. So, yeah, so I think it was like 80%. Yeah. 80%. And, and I'm teaching new therapists, CBT, that's cognitive behavioral therapy, and can't do proper therapy myself. I am inferior to even some of my, my trainees. That's a good one. How much did you believe that? At that time, <laughs> I believe it's yeah, definitely at least 90%. 90%. And uh, I will never catch up and can't slow down because I, I need income more than ever. Uh, uh, be, there's more expenses last year, my daughter's wedding coming up this year, and this is all, all my fault. Uh, yeah, so that was quite hopeless. Uh, I think... Uh, the, the first part, I believe, much more than the, um, the significant my fault, uh, 90%. 90%, great. Just four more, but these are really excellent. And again, I, I would think most of our listeners can identify with these. You have to put the details of your own life, but the, the themes uh, are pretty similar, I suspect. I work practically all evenings uh, not having quality time with Alexandra, my wife, except quick dinner, the problems in our relationship are all my fault. I think that the problems in our relationship are all my fault. It is 100%. 100. And then she's going to be really angry with me, and it's our 33rd anniversary. Congratulations on that, by the way. And we shouldn't fly, fight. You call that conflict phobia. Yeah, I mean, that's right put the types of self-defeating beliefs there. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so that is, um, uh, I believe that I should, we shouldn't fight. I don't like fighting. So that, that is around 100%. Yeah. 100%, okay. And then two more. I want to please and never say no when people ask me to take on some projects and not re reject them and hurt their feelings. That is something that I need to work on a lot. Yeah. I have tendency to say yes first before thinking even. How much is, do you believe that? 95, let's say. How much? 95. 95, great. By the way, did I mention to you our, our, the plan that Rhonda and I have? No. Oh, we're going to start a uh, 
a new institute in down in uh, Los Angeles area, and we uh, it's it's it it's going to be quite an undertaking, uh, but it's it's incredibly important, and and we 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 really want you to head it up. I would say yes to it. <laughs> <laughs> As a domain, feeling good, LA. <laughs> yeah. As in the final negative thought, as an experienced therapist in my 60s, I should know better and be in control, manage uh, time better and, and be in control and apply to myself what I'm teaching to others and things I know that are uh, uh, effective. Uh, that is. Uh, that is probably 100%. Yes. 100%, great. So this is a beautiful example. And now let me uh, ask you the uh, invitation question, or perhaps you want to, would you like to do that? Uh, yes. Uh, Rhonda? Oh, okay. So, Mario, you know, we, you, know you, you expressed some distress when you woke up, like a lot of, a lot of distress. I don't mean to minimize it when you woke up thinking about and worrying about this patient and, and, um, you know, you had a lot of painful thoughts and painful feelings about it. And I'm wondering, is, you know, you've given us an A for empathy. And I'm wondering if now is a good time to roll up our sleeves and get to work on it, or if there's more empathy that you'd like to receive or support, or, um, or perhaps there's some things that you haven't talked about yet that you'd like to ex explain to us. Oh, I think that you get the situation quite well. So uh, thank you very much. That is uh uh yeah i think i'm ready to work i mean <laughs> i don't want to, okay. I don't want okay. to do that so right. what 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 then would uh, let, let's say uh, uh that a miracle happens here to today uh and at the end of the uh, the session you say wow Rhonda and david really blew my socks off and this uh this was a fantastic session what what would happen in this session? What would you be hoping for? We can't promise any, any miracles, but uh, it's nice to know. You know what would the goal be? What what are we aiming for? Um, actually, it, for the first time, it occurred to me another part here. It is not just saying yes to other people, but me myself coming out with brilliant ideas and wanting to do them too. I think if I so the, the miracle cure would be definitely decreasing the the, the uh, miracle, so miracle, not decreasing, freeing myself from this perfectionism and uh, being hard on myself for making mistakes. That would be okay. The first thing. Okay, well that's a good one. Now let now I have a question for you. Uh, you, you know we have this uh, ma magic button. Uh, and um and the if 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 you press the magic button you'll be free from your perfectionism and all these negative thoughts and feelings with uh, no effort uh and you'll go into a state of uh, immediate euphoria would would you press that magic button uh i wouldn't okay that's good good choice tell us why why not um i wouldn't because uh actually some of that perfectionism and uh, some of those shoots um and make keep me on my toes um uh so that i'm really uh motivated to be on top of my game sure okay let's let's list all all the positives of, uh, of this problem and that can be no, number one on our list of positives uh it it keeps keeps me on my toes uh and it is that uh, true yeah is that Im important it is quite important yeah definitely. is it powerful it is powerful okay what what are some some other really good things about your negative thoughts and feelings you can focus on any one of these negative thoughts or any one of these uh nine uh kinds of negative feelings that are all intense so, well, what is, how about inferior? You're feeling ninety percent inferior, worthless, and inadequate. Keeps me more humble. Okay, that's cool. And uh, not not to 
uh, you know, not to, uh, so full of myself. <laughs> yeah, but, right. Sure. Um, sure. How how about uh, you're you're kind of hopeless. Uh, Sixty uh, percent hopeless. What are some great things about hopelessness? Oh, uh, you know, I can talk about hopelessness for others, benefits of that. But for me, I don't really see. You know, and it protects from disappointment and so on. But this hopelessness was um, uh, really heavy at that time. So at that time, I couldn't find any benefits of that hopelessness. You know, I know that mm. protects me from. Well, what what is your hopelessness uh, oh, we telling are, we you lost that's your... super important? Oh, you lost me? No, Mariusz. Could you say something else, Mariusz? I'm saying something else. Okay, great. Perfect. Yep. What 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 is your hopelessness telling you that's really important, Mariusz? Uh, that I care about what I do, but I don't know how to get there, I think. Okay, that that's one thing. Is that true? Yeah, that is definitely true. That I care. What else? What What else does your hopelessness uh, say? Or I could suggest something. You can tell me if it rings true. Yes, please do so. Does the hopelessness uh, reflect the fact that you've struggled with this uh, unsuccessfully for many years, and it's a really kind of an overwhelming, heavy, oppressive uh, thing? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 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 does your hopelessness also show some skeptical thinking? You didn't really think that David and Rhonda were going to cure you today, did you? I was hoping for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what is the hopelessness to tell us? That is why I pay you those big bucks, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, we so, do offer money back guarantee. Uh, thank you. <laughs> now, I think that with this hopelessness, there's also uh, this helplessness. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. It was uh, that I didn't know how to free myself from that spiral of uh, perfectionism, inferiority, you know, how it goes, right? Uh, you know, taking on more, you know, not wanting to disappoint others and myself. And, uh, yeah. And being a good husband and father and all that stuff. Yeah. So, so there was uh, that was really heavy. I mean, I think now when I when, when I'm talking to you, I think it was much more than it was sixty. I put the sixty then, but it was really yeah. It was much more. Than now. So I'll I'll reestimate that. What's the percentage on the hopeless? Ninety five. That only was ninety five. Ninety. Ninety five. Eighty five. Oh yeah. Ninety five. Sorry. Oh, ninety five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ninety five. Good. Are you at as you're talking about that now, it sounds like your hopelessness is also reflecting how much you really care about. I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but just really how much you're dedicated and how much you care about Alexandra and your kids. Like how much you care about them is reflected in your hopelessness to me when, you, when you're describing it. So, yeah, so definitely I care about them. And, and yeah. So and maybe the guilt and shame show that as well. Yeah. The yeah. guilt. Mm-hmm. And I know I don't know if this fits. You can just say if it doesn't fit. But do you think your hopelessness, in a way, it it kind of benefits you as a therapist and psychiatrist? Because can you relate more to your patients when they describe their hopelessness? Oh, I can relate to their hopelessness, but I'm much better at positive reframing theirs <laughs> than my own. Uh huh. Sure. But, yeah, of course. Um. You know, you're anxious. What What are some great things about your anxiety? Oh, it keeps me alert. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 considering all different scenarios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, if you hadn't woken up anxious, you wouldn't have sent her, your patient, the document that, and you wouldn't yeah. have finish motivating yeah. the emails sure okay so this motivates me to do things uh and uh guilt too <laughs> um but also um, i had some uh, uh, so which um, makes me more careful yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
So oh. I sometimes check. Oh, have I, sometimes I have this. Have I sent this email? Have I done it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have I only planned on doing that, or do they really do it? So. Uh -huh. What What do all of your self criticisms say about your core values as a human being? Oh, the high standards. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Is that good? Mm. But it is in conflict with this being humble. <laughs> so, yeah, it's true. Um, but, uh, having high standards is in conflict with being humble. Yeah, this the, the idea that I can do all of those things is, is a little bit uh, uh, arrogant, you know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. A grandiose little grandiose, narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. Then I don't like that part. You know? I was thinking while I was jogging the other day the difference between perfectionism and narcissism. Mm. Oh. You know the difference? I got all excited about it. I've told several people and no no one yet has been excited about it. <laughs> I'll try I again. promise, <laughs> I, try promise I will. The uh the uh perfectionist th th thinks you, you know, I, I should be perfect. The uh narcissist <laughs> thinks I am perfect, and you better notice. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so, there, there is you. a similarity there. Can you think of any other positives about any of your negative thoughts and feelings? I'm sure there are a lot, but I think you nailed, you know, the main themes really, re really, really quickly. Yeah, um, I just noticed lonely, and I think... Um, uh, I was surprised to feel that way, but it felt lonely, like in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, and what is good about it is also puts uh, squarely responsibility on me, right? Mm -hmm. For for what I... Uh, so that is me who got myself into this, and, and I would need to... So I think that loneliness also shows responsibility. Well, what, this, what, in this in this situation, I never thought of it. What 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 else does your loneliness show about you? That's really awesome, Mariush. Oh. Lonely? I don't know what else does it say. Well, it 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 often shows oh. a, a real yearning to be close to people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You definitely. have that? Yes. Is that good? Definitely, one thing to be close. I live, really like to be close to people. Yeah. 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 It doesn't also show how much you value. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you value intimacy. You're not afraid of intimacy. You welcome intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, 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 absolutely. I like close connections. Yeah. So. Um... Let's um, let, let's uh, take a look at your daily mood log and um, see. Instead of pressing that uh, magic button, maybe we could tone these feelings down a little bit. Oh yeah, we didn't ask what your sadness and and uh, d depression shows. That's really cool. Okay, uh, so sadness um, that I'm realistic uh, that. Uh, um, so that I'm not afraid to look at the bad side of things. Um, um, uh, so that um, that I have critical thinking. Can you summarize that, uh, Rhonda? Yes, Mario said um, his sadness shows that he's realistic. He can realistically look at the situation that he's not afraid to look at the bad side oh, of the I see. situation and that he has critical thinking and he can develop insight. I'm assuming that what's that's, I made that leap from critical thinking. That yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I can, I, I can see another uh, thing about your sadness that I uh, really like and makes me feel close to you. And that's that uh, you, 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 you have, quite a considerable uh, accomplishments for your life and um uh, and and these have been recognized by many people and, and by 
and 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 you've worked extremely hard and and you're sensing yet the sadness uh, you see uh, the depression sadness is is a, a sense of loss uh, as much as anything and uh, and it, it's it, it it can be your your heart's way of telling you that that th there's something very important that's missing from your life yes and you feel very kind of more mourning uh you know that 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 is brilliant uh, again mm. that he really hit hit the, the nail on the head yeah do you, i mean do you ever get sad and and tearful or is it always more on a self critical level uh, i usually don't uh, um maybe maybe once or twice a year <laughs> mhm mm mm -hmm. well that's pretty good that's pretty good what's that like what what happens when you get sad and tearful what uh, uh, so um actually come memories of of being a child feeling really lonely and and at a loss and um and then and then comes this uh this intense throat pain like choking pain wow and that I and I have never went beyond that. So so that is when I try to distract myself to something else. So some sometimes you you remember feeling lonely as a child and uh and and that's associated I guess with some sadness and and some tears and then you get a kind of a choking pain and then you 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 move away from that and you distract yourself yeah from yeah. that i tried to went through this so you know uh never went through that really so the, the, i mean this is a quite sad moment so that they don't happen to me often you know there are years that they don't happen right but the, the, sometimes it happens and that is uh, doesn't last, you know, it's usually an episode, you know, of, okay. you know, less than an hour or something. And and were you quite sad and lonely as a child? Yeah, I felt quite sad. No, I de definitely didn't show it, right? Uh, I was polite. Boy, you know, until I went to school, then I went, I became a hooligan. But, um, but I was uh, polite, well-spoken, um, quite smart. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.